innovation. Uh, so we've been running this since uh, 95, and uh, I think we've had 17 or 1800 delegates from over 50 countries uh, coming to the events that we've run in the US and in Europe. And uh, we still haven't yet gone to uh, Japan or China, uh, but maybe then we, we can look at that into the future. Um, so I, I'd firstly like to, to as, as in uh, the, uh, the way of these events, to thank our supporters. Uh, very important. So we, uh, our uh, key strategic partner is OVU, and uh, after the coffee break, uh, uh, Oria will give a, a short sort of introduction, expanding a little bit on what Jose uh, mentioned here on the background. Uh, also, the uh, Rotterdam Climate Initiative, uh, the Port of Rotterdam, and then CSCP, uh, IEMA, and ENDS Europe. So uh, I think hopefully that's enough of the. Uh, the, the detail on those things, but uh, very important in the way to the events that we uh, appreciate our partners and supporters. So thank you very much to everybody. What I'm going to do uh, before passing over uh, back to Jose and uh, to Jan is really just to give a very short uh, you know, overview of a few issues that I'm seeing uh, in, in, in sort of emerging at the moment, really to set a little bit of a backdrop. Hopefully I get the technology working uh, Maybe I just asked him which is it left or right? Sorry, <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. So basically, we're we're in a sort of situation where we're st in a very sort of uncertain world. Uh, a lot of economic uncertainty. We had the the challenges with the Iceland economy, uh, you know, collapsing virtually uh, overnight three three years ago. Uh, Greece. Uh, challenges there. UK predicted through government cuts to have uh, half a million to a million uh, public sector jobs go. I heard from Oriol that in uh, Spain we're facing uh, youth unemployment between 18 and 25 of about 40 percent, which is a shockingly high number. So we're facing a lot of these economic problems and dots. So a lot of uncertainty, <coughs> fragility. And Clearly, when we bring in the broader challenges of sustainability, we've got this, you know, a series of, of, of challenges, environmentally, socially, and economically, that we're going to face. And there's going to be some, some difficult choices that will need, need to be made. And operating in generally free market economies, uh, such difficult choices are not necessarily the, the stuff of conventional economics. <coughs> so, we are seeing and have seen the growth in, growth in the, uh, and, and, and maybe some of the shift from the west to the east uh, in, in terms of the, the BRICS economies, Brazil, uh, Russia, India and, and, and China, but also what we're seeing is the rise of the civics, which I've picked up the other day. Uh, Chile, uh, Indonesia, Vietnam, Egypt and Turkey. So we have the new, the new breed um, emerging. Just, Where's the, the new economic growth going to come from, and, and what is, uh, how sustainable will that be? <clears throat> and out of this sort of like phoenix from the asset ashes, we're seeing the sort of re-emergence of discussion around green growth, uh, with working parties from uh, United Nations Environment Program, World Economic Forum, and, and others really discussing what green growth might be. We have even, and, and uh, Dai Young may well talk about this, a Green Growth Act in Korea. 78% of Korean regeneration economic stimulus package uh, went to uh, uh, environment from the, common, the broader economic stimulus package. We also saw recently uh, the Nordic ministers, um, uh, prime ministers sitting down really to discuss what the pathway of green growth might be in the Nordic region. So, the challenges from shifting from you know, our conventional economies to resource efficient, low carbon economies is going to be a major challenge. Uh, transformation, restructuring, uh, new skills, uh, a lot of devil in the detail of how we implement that. Not just at a policy level, but also at, at a pragmatic level. And Sort of coming out of this, maybe we're going to see opportunities to try and link up much more effectively uh, 
employment, entrepreneurship and eco-innovation. What I'm thinking of as the Green Triangle. How can we start to connect these elements up much more effectively? If we're coming up with new eco-innovations, this can generate new businesses and create new employment. New employment. And initially, and, and in, in parallel to this, we've got the, the development of the whole uh, you know, smart city, low carbon city uh, uh, evolution, if you like, particularly uh, in, in China, and uh, a, a lot of initiatives related to that. The infrastructure development around smart grids and a number of major players starting to move into that area. But to enable some of this change to happen, and, and others will speak much more eloquently uh, than me on this, we're going to potentially, <coughs> alongside continuous improvement and incremental change, to see potential disruptive innovations. And the challenge is we can't see those disruptive generate, uh, innovations generally. So we need to see what those might be, and, and whether it's going to come from the framework change we have in the UK, uh, the Code for Sustainable Homes, which is going to require all new build to be net zero carbon, and there are other similar initiatives around. It's a framework change that can create change. Or is it going to come from individuals? Facebook, Google came from individuals. This wasn't you know, a structural change. This was from individuals. And I've gone up and down on this issue over the years as to whether individuals really can create change, and, and of course they can. Another issue that 